about a week ago was the winter solstice which is the shortest day of the year at least up here in the northern hemisphere and from here on it's gonna the days are gonna get a little bit longer and that's really good for me because uh, daylight has been a major limiting factor for me in getting things done because not only is it getting dark early but the sun isn't coming up till pretty late in the morning so I had very limited hours, and, and so many hours of those daylight would be taken up by just daily chores I've got to do to just survive and get through the day out here. So as the days get longer, that's going to help me out big time. Even, let's say the, the phone says that the sun's going down at 5.30. Well, being here in the tree line... By like 4.45, I'm starting to lose light pretty quickly. So come like 4 p.m., I would have to be thinking about, okay, well, where's going to be a good stopping point so I can get things wrapped up and, and things put away for the night and that before it gets too dark. I think our ancestors, even our more re recent ancestors of 100 years ago, were much more in tune with the day and night cycle because it just had a much bigger impact on their lives than, than today. You know, today you probably, in your neighborhood, as soon as it gets dark, the street lights kick on, and you have lights outside your house that kick on, and at worst, you got a light switch you just got to flip, and, and you have all the illumination you need. But out here, I mean, it, it gets totally dark. For me to get a street light, I got to drive miles down the road before I run into one. So you got to be able to provide your own light and vision out here. Um, uh, there is like the last few nights, it's been close to a full moon, and that's been very nice. That that lets you get around pretty well. Uh, last night was interesting because it was partly cloudy. So there was times where it was like totally illuminated out here and then the clouds would come and it'd get dark and then it'd be bright again and then dark and, you know, living back in town, I never really got to notice how much of an impact that had because you just have so much light pollution from artificial lights. But out here, you really notice things like that and it's, it's pretty cool. What I've really needed to depend on on these lights of mine this is a dorsey brand flashlight this one individual is probably a good 10 years old i've liked this thing so much that i went and bought like a half a dozen more and uh one is in each vehicle and then i got a few left in the package unopened just just waiting to be used and this thing's been pretty indestructible. It's waterproof, which I like because a lot of times when you lose your power is is in storms when it's raining and wet out. Uh, it's It's got a little carabiner on there, so you hook it onto the loop on your pants. and Just nice, cheap flashlight, but it, it really gets the job done. It's nice, too, because it's not ultra bright. I, I never really like the super bright flashlights because... Your whole purpose is to illuminate things so you can see it without just uh, letting the neighbors know what, what you're out doing. You know, just enough light. And this is really in that range of, of just as much as you need without being overkill. I see people will buy $150 flashlights and, and it makes no sense to me. I mean, it's your money. Do what you want. But for 10 or $12... This is a great deal and pretty much indestructible. Now, that's, that's about twice of what I paid back when I bought all mine. But even at today's prices, I, I still think they're a good deal for it. So, yeah, these Dorsey flashlights are kind of perfect. I've also been, oh, just totally using this lantern. I mean, this has been a savior for me. It's Ozark Trail brand which is uh, Walmart's brand of outdoor line of things. So I think essentially what they do is, is just basically copy other outdoor brands like Coleman or whatever, steal their technology, and then go and mass produce it in China so they can sell it a lot cheaper. But regardless, this, this thing's been great. 
It's got a little charging port in there, so it uses the same charger as my phone or also a USB. So I can plug it right into my solar generator and keep it topped off. You can also unscrew it and use regular alkaline batteries if need be, but it's got three brightness settings. It's got a convenient handle to haul around, and it's also got this smaller hook on top, which has really come in handy for me because in the, the top of the tent, it had a little hook that I was able to hang it on off of. And now in the cabin, I've installed a little eye hook that I hang it off of so it stays out of the way and, and illuminates the entire room, which has been really nice because, you know, if it's getting dark at 5.30, I'm not going to bed at 5.30. So I kind of just sit in there and do a lot of reading. I, I love reading. So this has allowed me to sit and read a lot. It's been good practice being out here because it's really been a good trial run of showing me which tools I use constantly and which ones I brought out that I thought I need but really don't so much. So next time I'm in Walmart, I'm going to look to see. I, I want to buy a spare of these. I really like whenever there's a product that works well for me and I like it and I've put it through the paces and it, and it does the job. I really like to keep extra spares on hand of it. My dad also bought a bunch of these little solar lights for me. They were on clearance at one of the big box hardware stores. And these have really come in handy. I think I've got about eight of them uh, spread around the campsite in the areas I, I need to get to at night. And so basically the solar panel charges during the day. And then as soon as it gets dark, they kick on. Now, sometimes when it's real gloomy and rainy, it doesn't get the charge real well, so it may not last the entire night. But that's okay. If it can get me through the first few hours of the night before I pass out, it, it's a big help. You mount it up about seven feet up a tree, and uh, it's also got a motion sensor, so it stays on low setting normally, which is just enough to just let you see the area but then when you come up close to it moving it'll kick on a lot brighter for 20 seconds which comes in handy when you're going to grab something out of a, a bin or out of a vehicle or something now i've had to clear a few stray branches away from the front of this because when it's windy out it, they'll set that off and drain the battery real quickly on it but these are these are very handy I've had garden solar lights in the past that didn't last real long for me. Uh, they would die quickly and not hold a charge. But on these, I think I'm going to try to get ahead of the game and find the, the rechargeable batteries for them and have a little stockpile of those on hand because I really like having these batteries. And hey, if, even if they these lights don't work, forever if they can just get me through this winter until i could find a more permanent solution they were they were a great find now that it's dark out i wanted to show you guys how much these lights help out so as i come up to it it's going to fire up and really light up the area around here And you can see the lights just off in the distance. It's not going to come across well on the camera in the dark here. But they make it just enough that you can get around out here, see what you're doing. Then again, as you come close enough, it lights up the area enough to work with. So they help out a lot. 